Hey church, my name is Pastor Brian Wise and I want to welcome you to our online worship today with our Saviors Lutheran Church here at Naperville, Illinois. Before we begin our worship today, I want to take a moment just to invite you to join us on June 17th, both at noon or at 8 p.m. for two different Zoom calls that our church is hosting. Our church, Our Saviors, is a part of the larger church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and together we have designated June 17th as the commemoration of the martyrdom of the Emmanuel Nine. These are the nine people who were shot and killed on June 17th in 2015 during a Bible study at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, also known as Mother Emmanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. The ELCA, our church has a relationship with the shooter as well as two who were killed that day. It reminds us both of our complacency and our calling as a people. Together, we confess that we are in bondage to the sin of racism and white supremacy. And at the same time, we rejoice in the freedom that is ours in Christ Jesus, who has broken down the dividing walls, that is, the hostility that comes between us. And so we want to invite you to pause on June 17th, to join us at noon or at 8 p.m., to join us on this Zoom call as we reaffirm our commitment to repenting to the sins of racism and white supremacy, which continue to plague this church, and to venerate the martyrdom of the Emmanuel Nine, to make this day of penance with prayer. There will be a link to these gatherings uh, which will be shared in the emails that are sent out with this video, but also it will be shared on our website at oursaviors.com. Let us now continue our worship today as we begin with confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. We pray to you, Almighty God, in times of conflict, you, our, our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Do not let us fail in the face of current events. Hold us together with your love. Give us strength for all that we need. Help us in our confusion and guide our actions. Heal the hurt, console the bereaved and the afflicted, protect the innocent and the helpless and deliver any who are still in peril. For the sake of your great mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church, I'm Pastor Brian. Hey, Joe, I'm Pastor Wesley. And we want to welcome you to another children's sermon. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Wesley, 
What do we have right here? What are all of these things? <laughs> yeah, they're pictures. Can you tell me who are these pictures of when you see the pictures? This is Mama and Gia, and this is Gia, and this is Mama. Uh -huh. Who and is this right here? Who's that? Oh, and this is Mama and Poppy. Then, then this is me when I was a baby. I had to dream right now. Yeah? And okay, so wait, we've missed this one person. Who's this? Pani. You know, all of these pictures are our whole family. Is anybody missing from our family of Mama and Poppy and Gia and Wesley and Pani? Uh, Nobody's missing, are they? Oh. Huh, pretty cool, huh? Well, what would happen if your picture went missing? Do you think that we would go look for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would, because your picture belongs here. Wait a second. It's not missing, but if it were, we would go and find it. Well, today, Jesus is talking about all of the disciples and he's calling all of them and he names every single disciple kind of like you named Mama and Poppy and Gia and Pani and yourself. Jesus names everybody and he even names this guy named Judas. Can you say Judas? Judas. Judas. Now Judas later on, he doesn't follow all of the rules and so they kind of give him a nickname called the Betrayer. What? Betrayer. But you know what? Judas still belongs within the family of pictures. He still gets named. And you know what I love about this? Is everybody is named. Can you say everybody is named? Everybody is named. Everybody is loved. Everybody is loved. Jesus loves everybody. Jesus loves everybody. And that's what I think is really important for us to know. Everybody is loved. Nobody's missing from the picture. Um, Nobody else. And no matter what you do, boys and, and girls, and yeah. you are always in God's picture yeah. family. We're yeah. all in the family together, yeah. huh? Yeah. All right, will you pray with me? Fold your hands and let's pray. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for including us all. Help us to love one another, find one another, and make sure everyone is included. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you help me with our sending? So let us go out to know Jesus and make Jesus known. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We've invited our college-age young adults to participate in the service by reading the scripture and the gospel. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured in our, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and cure them of every disease and every sickness. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collectors. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. Let's pray. Gracious God, as 
we are gathered together wherever we might be. We pray for your spirit to guide us, lead us, teach us to follow. In Jesus' name. In our uh, Gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew, we hear that Jesus calls his 12 disciples to be with him. Disciple means follower or learner. And then in the very next verse, the very next verse, he's talking about the same 12 people and he talks about them as his 12 apostles. You know what apostle means? Apostle means one who is sent out. These 12 were at the same time the ones who were drawn in to be with Jesus and also sent out to live and reflect the love that God has first given them. And it's true for us too. We are both disciples and apostles. We both receive and give. We both know Jesus and make Jesus known. We are gathered in and sent out. And one of the things about those first 12 that was so amazing is how diverse that group of people was that Jesus called his disciples and apostles. You know, if I was doing that, I'm not sure I would have chosen the ones that Jesus chose. But do you know who he chose? He chose four fishermen. Four fishermen, two of whom, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also known as the sons of thunder, probably because of their bad tempers. He chose another man who would betray him, turn him over to be crucified. That was Judas. He chose one who would deny him, in fact, deny him three times in one night, Simon Peter. He chose one that we remember as a doubter, that's Thomas. Then he chose a zealot, the other Simon on the list. A, a zealot is one who hated the ruling power, the Romans, perhaps a man of violence who would certainly have no love for anybody who worked for that ruling force for the Romans, particularly people like tax collectors. And then you know what Jesus did? The next person he chose, he chose Matthew, whose job was a tax collector. And then there are a few on the list that we don't know a whole lot about. And now Jesus calls us, calls you and me, says to us, follow me, doesn't choose the most powerful, the most talented, even the nicest. He chooses sinners. He chooses us. Doesn't wait for us to be perfect, doesn't even wait until we're almost perfect. Jesus chooses us as we are and then sends God's Spirit to be with us and in us, to change us, to follow. Jesus chooses sinners. Jesus chooses us. You want to know how amazing God's love is? How far-reaching, how inclusive? Jesus sent out the apostles. How many did Jesus send out? Might seem like a real obvious question. How many were there? There were 12. How many did he send out? He sent out 12. But do you know what that means? If he sent out all 12, that means he sent out even Judas, the one who would betray him. That's how amazing the love is, how far-reaching God's love is for us, for all people. Jesus chooses sinners. Jesus chooses us. It says in our Romans reading for today in verse 8, but God proves God's love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, died for us and for all people. And God fills us with grace even in the toughest times. It says a little bit earlier in that, that reading from, from uh, Romans. Not only that, but we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. 
As I was thinking about this sermon and thinking about all the events that have been happening in our lives in the world right now, particularly this week, thinking about George Floyd and the issues of pain and injustice that have been brought forth. So I was thinking about all that. I thought about a little story that I'd read somewhere along the line. The problem was I couldn't remember exactly when I had read the story or where I had read the story. But I started searching. I thought I remembered enough words, you know, in, in one of the little lines from the story that I could uh, put those into the online search engine and maybe find it. And pretty soon I found that, yes, it was in a magazine that I get every couple of weeks, but it was from last November. And we get rid of our magazines quicker than that. And so that magazine was gone. So then I went back online and tried to be able to access that article online. And I finally found the story. I was actually kind of surprised that it was just a couple paragraphs long. Just a little short story about a family that went to Germany to visit relatives, true story. And one day they were, uh, they were exploring a little town in Saxony. And the author's sons and their cousins found a playground and started playing with the other children there. And at some point, one of the children climbed onto the, one of the rocking play animals that you might see at a playground. And the girl who had been on the toy earlier didn't like the idea. It was her toy. She'd been playing on it. And so she came back to the little boy and pushed him off. And with children and grandchildren, I've seen this behavior. I'm sure you have too. Nothing real surprising there. But here's the part that stuck with me. When the girl's father came over to ask what had happened, and this girl and her father lived there in that little town, the little girl's explanation seemed to satisfy him, and it seems to me that it probably shouldn't have. Do you know what the little girl said to her dad to explain her behavior, to explain why she had pushed this little boy from a different country off that toy that she had been playing, playing on? She said it in German which I don't understand, but it translates basically like this. He doesn't belong to us. He doesn't belong to us. He's not one of us, so we don't really have to care about him. I don't know that we would do it on purpose. But is it possible that when we see injustice in the world, that sometimes we pay more attention if we feel like it is someone who is one of us, and we pay less attention if we feel like it is not one of us? Maybe if it's someone with a different color skin or from a different country, or somebody who votes for a different political candidate or whose religion is different or whatever. Could it be? But the amazing thing that God shows us is that God loves all of us. Everyone. The ones that we are like and the ones that we are not like, and maybe even more than that, the ones we like, and even the ones we don't like. And knowing that Jesus loves all people, that God loves all people, that we are called to reflect that love, can you start to see that because everyone belongs to God, everyone is also a part of of our family, everyone. Last December, I was preaching a sermon talking about issues of race in Naperville, issues we continue to face, and I shared this little paragraph from the ELCA. We believe that Christ's church is for all people. God calls each of us by name, and it is not our job to sort, divide, categorize, or exclude. 
Everyone is part of the world that God loves. So when we reflect God's love, we also seek to reflect the love that God gives to everyone. To everyone. And I know we sin and we fail and we mess up. And still, God calls you and me and all people to be Jesus' disciples, followers, learners, and also apostles, the ones who are sent out to reflect the love we have first received. I want to end with a prayer I use quite often, but I think it's very helpful. It's attributed to St. Francis. Let's pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In Jesus' name. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace. In my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea
nation. Let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is bloody, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Holy One, we have created divisions that are not your will. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick, especially those we lift to you in prayer. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Holy One, these prayers and the prayers on our hearts we now name aloud, we release to you. Receive also our prayers too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please take time today to share God's peace with those around you. At this time of the offering, we wanted to remind you of the congregational meeting, which officially will be next Sunday, June 21st. This year it has and it will continue to look different. This past week, there were a series of three Zoom forums to attend to the budgets, missions, and properties. The annual report has been sent via email, and voting will happen online. Your opportunity to vote will be emailed to you if you haven't already done so at one of the Zoom forums. Please look in your email for that opportunity to participate remotely and if you have any questions, please email info at oursaviors.com. And let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, so that all may know your care. Prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in grace. Amen. And let us pray again. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all of your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and live forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.